Hey, happy holidays. Welcome back to the channel. I hope you've had a little bit of time off and been able to maybe celebrate, relax a little bit. Maybe you got yourself a couple of gifts. Maybe you hung out with some family or friends. I don't know what you're doing these days, but I hope everything is going well. Um, I got this uh, McAllen here, McAllen single malt scotch whiskey right here. So I'm going to have a little bit of that. And I got a new uh, project that I'm going to be uh, talking about with you. Oh, isn't that in that in that nice? So I'm gonna have a little drink here. Um, and so today's project here is a little bit different. I've been having a little bit of um, discussion in the comments with Craig. Hi, Craig. Uh, hope you don't mind that I'm bringing you up specifically. But uh, we were talking. I was given the channel roadmap, and he thought it would be a good idea to provide uh, a common set of you know working code that people can use, and that maybe people could contribute to. That way, you know, we don't have to reinvent the wheel all the time, and we have some common code uh, that we can share, and maybe even build like a little open source project or something. I'm not sure exactly um, what he had in mind, but it made me think a little bit more in terms of a lot of the different uh, little scripts and projects and Python packages um, that we've discussed so far on the channel. And I've also been talking about a Docker and possibly doing a tutorial on Docker a little bit. And so I thought about combining those things uh, into a single repository and that maybe we could have a shared set of common libraries and components uh, that we can use. So up here on my screen, and, and this is what I'm imagining so far, and I'm this video right now is just for me to talk about what I'm thinking and also get some feedback on what you would like to see here and how I could provide a useful repository for people getting an uh, who are new to developing like financial data analysis type applications, automated trading bots, and the sort of things we focus on uh, on the channel. So, um, so here's what I got. I called it Trade Kit, and I'm considering this a set of open source components and libraries for financial applications, data analysis, visualization, and automated trading bots. And so what I've done is taken a lot of the libraries, the common Python packages that we've used on the channel, and packaged them up into a Docker container. That way, uh, anyone who has Docker desktop can just uh, run a single command and bring up this little uh, Docker container on their machine. And it will just install all of these different components and handle all of the dependencies for you. And um, as you know, one of the challenges that I've had on this channel is that often, you know, I'm using Mac OS X here, even though I have a Surface Book and a Windows machine over there. You know, I like editing the videos on this uh, particular software I use, and I usually develop on an OS X box. Um, but not everyone uses OS X. Some people are using uh, Windows, which has a different, you know, scheduling system, uh, different, uh, sometimes installing some of the packages like TA lib can be a little bit challenging. So you never know what kind of little issues people are going to be having with uh, different uh, operating systems that they are running. So uh, the idea behind Docker, if you're unfamiliar, is it allows you to create these Docker images, which is just, and some people to get, if you get real technical, uh, don't like if you say that Docker is like a virtual machine, uh, but there's a more there's some technical distinctions there if you go watch some tutorials on that. Uh, but it's just a way to containerize a set, uh, both an operating system, a set of dependencies, some libraries, frameworks, all those things into this package, right? That can be run on Windows, on OS X, uh, on Linux, and so forth. And so um, basically, you download Docker. And then you can run this image that I have created. Okay. And so what I've done here is taken a variety of tools here. And here are the components of it. And so on the readme here, if I put it in GitHub, hacking the markets slash trade kit, and I've made this big list of all of the packages I've been using so far. If you see something, if you've used a Python package that isn't here, then uh, let me know and I could add it to the image. So what people often do is create these containers or images um, that people can use. So there might be one for 
Django web application development, for instance, if you're into Django and installs all those dependencies, or let's say you're a PHP developer or Node.js developer, you know, it, it just combines all these common packages uh, for certain types of tasks. There's probably one for machine learning, those different types of things. So what I've tried to do is create um, a special Docker uh, image for um, financial data applications and trading type applications, right? And so here is what I have so far. And what's nice here is that even if you don't want to use this Docker container here, um, this provides a nice list, you know, it's a directory of different open source projects and packages you might be interested in exploring. So this is useful just as a readme or a list of links, but also um, it allows you to locally set up, uh, just run this container and you have your development environment all set up. And also a nice thing about a Docker container is that it can be deployed uh, to a server as well. So uh, one a little unique thing about me, if you don't know, um, you know, I don't, I don't come from a finance background. I was actually a uh, more, more of a software engineer. So I've worked uh, as a game developer, I worked on game servers and also work at a large uh, technology company right now. And we put everything inside of these Docker containers. And so if you have a team of like 20 developers, for instance, then you know the first day you come in, you can just type a command, Docker compose up, installs all the dependencies and your development environment is set up right at the beginning from day one. And you can commit some source code, like write a, a line of code, commit it to Git, and there's a whole CICD, a continuous integration um, and deployment uh, process, uh, build process, right? And so you commit and it automatically just deploys it to the cloud. And so uh, we would use different services like Amazon ECS, uh, which is Elastic Container Service, uh, which lets you um, deploy a container to the cloud. And that way, if you have a large production application that gets a high amount of traffic, so for instance, our game uh, got over a million uh, users every single day. Um, a lot of times you want to run more than one server. And so this container could actually be run on a hundred different servers at the same time and load balance between them. And it just makes things very uh, scalable and your entire environment is defined in one place. You can work on it locally and deploy this container to the cloud. Someone can build the container on windows, uh, OS X and so forth. So you get the idea. This is, it's just this portable environment with everything you need to develop your application. And so what this is, TradeKit is a, uh, an environment that will let you run all these components uh, locally. And also when we deploy applications, I've been thinking more about deployment because I haven't been showing that much. So you've seen like the Binance application, web application, and the full stack application. I've been talking about deployment, but didn't quite get there yet. And I was trying to think whether to just uh, manually uh, do that and just install all the dependencies on another server or whether to uh, use something like Docker uh, that has this common environment. And so uh, with Craig's comment about um, trying to come up with a set of common components, uh, I decided it'd be kind of a cool idea since I have some time off here just to kind of collect all the different packages that we've had and see if I could combine those into a container and with a whole bunch of different categories of a libraries we're using. And I'm going to talk about all of those categories and the packages that are part of this uh, container here. Okay. So uh, the first set of things we need for these financial, financial applications is uh, some server components. And so this image is built on top of Debian uh, Linux. So Debian 10, it's a rock solid um, Linux distribution, and I've used it for servers for a no number of years. I've had servers running for like five years straight without ever even having any problems, maybe even a, a decade without having any problems. So I really trust uh, this distribution of Linux. And you know, there's other distributions like Ubuntu, which is based on Debian, which are better for the desktop. But I'm thinking of this in terms of having a server application that you can develop locally and then deploy it to the cloud and have your trading bot or web application uh, run for days on end, for instance. And so Debian is a solid a distribution uh, to use. So I've chosen that. Uh, the second thing I've chosen is Python, right? It's very common. And, you know, basically all of our applications we're building for financial applications are uh, written in Python, at least on this channel, you could write them in C++ or C sharp or whatever. But I use Python a lot because there's a lot of cool data analysis libraries um, and packages to use. The other um, server component is um, in the full stack application, we used a relational database. Uh, some people like MongoDB, but I think that my most, my favorite database is PostgreSQL. 
because it's rock solid. It's been around for probably like 25 years or so. And I've personally used it on multiple startups as the core um, database uh, for the system. And it's scaled up nicely. I've seen this be the center of companies that are a billion dollars, right? So and anything we build, PostgreSQL will handle it. You can store JSON, doc, JSON documents in it. Um, you can store all your relationships. You can you know, have user logins, whatever, whatever you need, uh, we can store it in PostgreSQL. In addition, um, I've packaged in with it is a uh, time scale DB, right? And I've talked about this a little bit on the channel and plan to do a full series on this, but it's a, a time series database and it's an extension uh, built on top of PostgreSQL. And so since we're working with a lot of financial timestamp data, like open, high, low, close uh, candlesticks, um, different tick data, that sort of thing, um, and also different observations of technical indicators or other feature attributes that might be time stamped. Uh, we want a time series database. And before I keep going, I guess with um, all the different components, let me let me just show you just so this is not so abstract in case anyone hasn't used most actually probably most people on the channel haven't deployed anything with Docker containers before, to be honest. So um, so if I clone this locally, right? So I'm going to go locally and do git clone, right? And so I'm just going to clone this hacking the markets trade kit dot git, right? And I'm going to go in that directory and you'll see all these different files in here. And I'm going to give you a little walkthrough um, of all the different components of this and also just talk about uh, how this Docker file works here, right? So I have the readme file with all the different packages that the, this is going to install. So what's inside of this Docker container? Well, um, there's, this is basically just a recipe for building this image. So it's a base image, which is uh, what this from line is. So this is based on the official uh, Docker image for Python. And so you choose a version of Python. So I'm choosing a base image here of Python 3.8, right? And there's newer versions of Python, but not every single uh, library is up to date. So for instance, TensorFlow, you want to use uh, it with Python 3.8. I don't think it's uh, quite ready yet for Python 3.9. I'm not sure all the issues there, but Python 3.8, it's a very modern uh, version of Python that's compatible with all the libraries that we're going to be using. Got a maintainer line. I'm maintaining this for now, part-time Larry. And also there's a couple of lines here. So what it does is it creates this uh, base image and then it copies the source code to a directory called app on our Linux distribu distribution. And then once, that, once that's done, you know, we have this base Python image. Then we have these other things we want to do that customize our uh, Docker image for our particular purposes. So what we do is we update all of our libraries and packages for Debian. And then we also, I'm also installing a couple of other dependencies with um, apt-get. So I'm installing a Redis server, which is a common uh, caching and data store. And I'm also installing SQLite 3 in case we want to store some data inside of a SQLite database and also some uh, common uh, libraries that are needing, needed for uh, building uh, development tools, right? Other thing I'm installing is Node.js. Even though it might seem a little weird to install Node.js here, um, we do use um, some Node packages from time to time. And we also use this WSCAT. If you've watched any of my videos on uh, WebSockets, this is a handy little command line utility that lets us easily subscribe to a WebSocket and, from the command line and just kind of play with it and see how it works, right? The next thing I do here is I'm actually um, downloading uh, the source code for TA lib. A lot of people in the comments before have said they had trouble installing TA lib on Windows. So what this does is download the source code for Windows or source code for TA lib, and then it actually compiles it from source and just does that for you in this container. And then you don't have to worry about it, right? We all can run it the same way and then just removes that zip file. And then it re installs this big requirements text. So it runs pip and then solves every single package in this requirements text. And I've grouped these all by the type of Python package there are. They, uh, they are. And so let me go ahead and get this process started to show you how to use this. So what I'm gonna do is type docker compose up. And when I do this, uh, what it's gonna do is start running this docker file and also uh, use this docker compose file that I'm gonna walk you through as well. And so you see how it's Right now, when I just typed one command, so you're gonna 
clone this repository, you type the one command and it starts downloading Timescale DB. It's gonna install PostgreSQL, it's gonna install Debian, uh, Python, all these different uh, Python packages and you just have to do nothing, right? And, and this is gonna run a web server even as well. And so it's just one command. You can run this on OS X, you can run on Windows as long as you have just the basic Docker desktop installed, okay? So it's downloading all those dependencies. I'm gonna let this run in the background and then I'm gonna get back to it and show you uh, what, it, what it did, okay? Um, so there's all these packages listed and um, so that's the Docker file, but there's also this Docker Compose YAML file. And this is another a file that's needed to kind of orchestrate different uh, Docker images together. And so this uh, image we're talking about, TradeKit, is a combination of a, a web server, which is using Fast API for now, since we've been using that on the channel. But also it downloads a Timescale DB and Postgres SQL 12. Timescale DB uh, elegantly works with Postgres SQL 12. There's a Postgres uh, 13 now as well, which I assume there will, there will be an update. And so what this does is installs, uh, it gives you an operating system, uh, a solid relational database, uh, Python as a programming language, and a time series database on top of Postgres, and then a variety of Python packages. And so they're all listed in this requirements text, and they're all listed in this readme file if you want to see all the details. And so let me quickly talk about all of the different packages that are a part of this, okay? And I hope this all makes sense so far where I'm going with this. So as I've discussed, um, there's uh, Linux, Python, Postgres, Timescale DB. I've packaged in a couple of web frameworks, so Fast API. Um, which is a web framework we're using now. It's a little bit newer. I've used Flask a lot over the years, um, like it a lot, easy to teach, uh, but also I'm, I feel like I'm doing more projects with Fast API going forward, so I'd like to spend more time on that. So I'm considering this the main web framework that's gonna be used here. And why do you need a web framework? So I've written like a Binance um, tutorial and a lot of people in comments are like, why even making a web application? Can I just write a script? And yes, you can just make a script. There's like, I, I have a full stack application, but if you're just making like a bot, you know, a simple WebSocket bot or something that fetches some data um, on a, a cron job or on a schedule, right? You don't necessarily need an entire web application, but I come at this from a, a server developer uh, perspective and also am interested in web app development. I like to make UIs where I can like click a button and do something from the web. Uh, access it anywhere. I like to um, see a chart on the web, those types of things. And so I think it's cool to have a, a web application uh, built into this container, and then I can host it up there and then manage uh, my bot or financial application um, from the web. I can put my little trading view widget, I can have web hooks, all kinds of cool things that you can do uh, with web-based functionality, right? So great, great way to make user interfaces also, okay? Um, I've also included a, couple, uh, a variety of data analysis packages. These are very common, we use them all the time. Pandas data frames, obviously, very common for manipulating uh, different uh, candlesticks, time series, um, numer any numerical data, NumPy, SciPy, Pandas data reader. Pandas data reader, you know, you can fetch data from re uh, remote sources like Yahoo Finance, things like that, right? Um, data visualization, another uh, set of packages we have. So I included uh, matplotlib, right? So we use that a lot of times to create some charts, usually on the desktop. Uh, Backtrader actually uses matplotlib to show um, the backtest results and visualize them. Uh, Plotly and Dash, which I haven't done a tutorial on yet, but I would like to, and that's just a way, if you don't, I like to use JavaScript a lot of times, but uh, Plotly Dash gives you a way to uh, create these cool web applications and visualize them um, using only Python code. So. I wanna explore that a little bit more since a lot of people don't want to switch between languages. Uh, MPL Finance, kinda of cool, I've tried this out, uh, but it's uh, it's basically uh, built upon matplotlib but has a lot of features that are very specific to finance applications rather than just being uh, very general. Uh, Jupyter Lab, a lot of people like to use Jupyter Notebooks. You, you notice I don't use them very much, but they're very common on these algo trading sites and things because people, 
you know, like to write it kind of like a research paper with their back tests. But I guess I don't necessarily, you know, I, I never really make trades from a notebook, you know. So you'll you'll see I'm usually developing some kind of server application or command line uh, utility that I run or deploy somewhere. So um, I, Jupyter is a really cool uh, tool, but also, you know, I, I, I never actually... A lot of times you're just demonstrating results, right? You're not not you're not really building an app that's just a Jupyter Lab Jupyter Notebook, right? Um, but someone tell me if I'm wrong. If you actually use Jupyter Notebook to actually execute uh, your trades, but for me, it usually people are just kind of showing a concept like a research paper, like a sort of thing. So uh, for this channel, I like to show you you know actual trades going through and, and those sorts of things. Okay, um, technical analysis, right? So. Um, we've used a variety of the indicator libraries on the channel, and so what this does, I've I've used a TA lib on the channel before. So since that's tricky to install, I have it automatically installed. TA lib, uh, the backtrader backtraders version of TA lib, BTA lib. There's uh, Tulip indicators which I used on the full stack tutorial, and I added a couple more that I haven't used. One's just called TA, and one's called Pandas TA, and maybe those are useful as well. Okay. And let's check in on our packages. My internet is running super slow right now. So a lot of this stuff is taking a long time to download, but usually this goes uh, really, really quickly. So I'll just check on that um, in a moment. So database libraries and data storage, I've included uh, Psycho PG2, which is just the Python package for connecting to a Postgres database. We include a Postgres database, SQL Alchemy, popular uh, object relational mapper, I use SQL, like raw SQL quite a bit, but also it's kind of nice to use just objects and functions to access your database. And so for things like filtering or just creating a user object or something and storing it to a database, SQL Alchemy is usually what most people use. Um, Redis, a common uh, package is, that's used to, uh, I used it for caching a lot in previous um, jobs. So you just, instead of hitting Postgres or your relational database, you just want to store uh, some data structures to cache. Um, Redis is a good uh, tool to use for that. And also I've included this H5Py, which is an interface to the HDF5 file format, which I haven't even used, but from what I understand, it's a common financial data format um, that is widely adopted, but I actually haven't used it on the channel at all. The next category of packages I have here are uh, broker APIs. So Alpaca, use it all the time, obviously. Um, it's a popular uh, brokerage that's used on the channel because they have a nice commission-free trading API. I've made a bunch of videos on that. So I've included uh, the Python package for um, the Alpaca trade API. Okay, uh, Binance, uh, for people that want to trade a cryptocurrency, included that as well. A TDA API, which is the easiest to use package I found for using TD Ameritrade. Um, IB in sync is a library for working with interactive brokers, which I'm planning to do a tutorial on in the coming week here, I believe. Um, I'm not sure if I'm even going to use this package, so I haven't evaluated them all. So I would like feedback of like, what is the best way to interact with interactive brokers that's very easy for people. And ideally, I, I've seen they have a REST API as well. And so uh, I would prefer actually using that over um, one of these packages that interact with like a, a desktop workstation because I want to be able to deploy it to a server and not necessarily uh, connect to um, a desktop application and get disconnected and all that kind of thing. Uh, Robin Socks I've included as well, even though I haven't been running any trades very often. I've used it on the channel before to interact with Robinhood, but I don't like it because it's not like an official Robinhood API and they can change it. Uh, but I, I like to include this because you might want to access some data from Robinhood or maybe you want to execute some trades using Robinhood because that's your primary uh, broker uh, or stock trading app that you use. It's not my primary one, but I have an account. I use it every once in a while. So uh, Robin Stocks, I've included it there. I'm going to check in on uh, the Docker build process. This usually goes really fast, but my internet's working really slow today. And so things have been slow, but you can see uh, what it's doing right now is it's installing like all of the dependency. So it's actually compiling uh, TA lib right now. And so you can see, even though, you know, you might not know how to compile a TA lib from source. Uh, this is, you know, you see uh, it said three white soldiers and breakaway candle cloud, dark cloud cover, that sort of thing. So it's like compiling all of these uh, TA lib uh, C files, I believe right now. So it's compiling all of that. So this is nice. You know, I just ran one command 
and it's installing all these different dependencies for me. Okay, so um, I'm going to keep going with this uh, on what's included, and as I've said before, I just if there's things you don't see here that you want to be included, or you just don't like like how I've packaged this, uh, I'm just trying to get feedback on this before. I release it. I'm hoping this is a good idea and that it's useful, that it's like this common environment that we can use and contribute to, and it helps every anyone just get started uh, really quickly with just getting up and running with a uh, environment for developing these types of financial applications. All right. So um, in Trinio, uh, so I've included a variety of packages under this data provider section. So the data providers I've chosen so far are in Trinio. Uh, Polygon, which we've used on the channel, IEX Finance, so there's a package for interacting with IEX Cloud, uh, Y Finance, which is very easy to use, just accesses Yahoo Finance data, Quandle, which I want to explore but I haven't used yet, Alpha Vantage, and then I've also included this package for downloading these SEC filings, which could be cool as well. Okay, um, and then I have the back testing category here, and so I've included a few common uh, back testing packages that people use including Backtrader, which is the most common one I use on the channel, uh, Pi Algo Trade, which I want to explore, BT, and Backtesting. I've also included a couple of these portfolio and performance analysis uh, packages, including PyFolio and FinQuant. Uh, these both installed successfully, but I know a PyFolio is um, from Quantopian, and I'm not sure the future status of all of their uh, projects. For instance, you'll notice under backtesting here, I didn't include a zip line, which a lot of people use, um, and that's because it wasn't working with me. For me, on Python 3.8, had like some compilation or installation issues, and from what I've looked at, they haven't actually kept this package up to date. I think they might have stopped with Python 3.5, and so I'm kind of concerned, you know, this. Uh, uh, Development is just kind of kind of stopped there with Quantopian uh, shutting down, even though some other companies probably have taken over parts of Quantopian. I don't know the whole uh, story with how uh, all their open source projects are being maintained uh, going forward. So a uh, zip line is not included here yet. Um, web server and task queue. So as I mentioned before, uh, fast API, um, I'm using as the primary web framework here. And so it uses a Uvicorn here for this uh, ASCII or ASGI uh, server implementation. And also I'm using a Celery as a task queue. So that's for cases where there's a long running task, like maybe it makes a network request to Alpaca or your broker, or there's just these long running tasks that you wanna like run in the background. And also um, I've used cron jobs to uh, execute trades and do things on a schedule. And Celery also provides that functionality. And what's nice is that some of the Windows folks have been like, oh, I don't have uh, cron jobs built in. I have this Windows task scheduler. How do I use that? And so a nice thing with Celery here is it gives us a nice way to define these scheduled tasks and uh, background tasks in a Python code. So um, I'm including that as well. Um, we got a variety of networking um, libraries that I've included. Um, and you see our now our Python packages are all being installed. So all the Python packages I'm talking about right now are being installed inside of the Docker container. So that's still going. This actually usually finishes in a couple minutes. So uh, it's just everything's taking forever to download on my current internet connection. I don't know if I'm getting throttled or what. Um, but uh, that's still going. And I'll show you actually what the end result of all this is after it finishes. Um, so networking, right, these are just network utility libraries that are common requests, right? We make HTTP requests all the time uh, for different, uh, to access different uh, URLs and APIs even. So Tradier, which I use uh, sometimes when I'm trading options, um, they don't, I don't think they have an up-to-date Python package, but you just use regular web requests. So you make a web request uh, to their API using the request library, and that gives you everything you need. You can access Alpaca or any API this way, just in a raw, you know, give it an endpoint and give it some data. And uh, request is very handy for all that. I got uh, Bodo3 here, which is useful for uh, if you're interacting with Amazon Web Services. So um, yeah, uh, it lets you manage any of the AWS services. So if you want to store some financial data in Amazon S3, you want to spin up an EC2 instance, you want to 
create Lambda functions, things like that. So I've used Amazon Chalice before for Lambda functions. Uh, Boto3 lets you configure all your different Amazon Web Services if you're going to uh, use their cloud services. Uh, URL Lab 3 is just another library for making HTTP requests and other utilities around HTTP. Uh, you got WebSocket clients, so we, we make some real-time uh, WebSocket bots sometimes that run at the command line, so we use uh, WebSockets libraries for that. And then also I have another set of utilities here. So in the utilities section, I have a beautiful suit four, which we use for screen, scra screen scraping. And so sometimes your data isn't available in a, an official API, right? And so uh, beautiful soup here is nice. It lets you easily crawl a web page to get you know specific pieces of it. So when we uh, want to look at the fear and greed index, for instance, we could like grab the actual numerical value for the fear and greed index from CNN.com and also um, something like maybe the put call ratio from the CBOE site, you can use Beautiful Soup 4 to like uh, scrape that as well. So anytime you want to scrape data from somewhere, Beautiful Soup 4 is very useful. Pendulum, this is common for date and time manipulation. The built-in date time objects from Python are a little bit confusing uh, to figure out how to use for uh, different time zones and daylight savings and those other issues we had. Uh, other time, we've had issues with those things in the past, which came up in the full stack tutorial. So Pendulum is designed to make it very easy to manipulate uh, date time objects. We got Click, which I've used to develop command line applications, right? And so I, I believe I used that in conjunction with Robinhood before. And so it's just a way to make, uh, make it very easy to find command line applications. And I also thought it'd be kind of cool to... Um, for this trade kit to have a, a command line utility that says, oh, create this project, right? And I want to use these different packages and would just like initialize it in an additional structure for you or something like that. Or, or load a database, for instance, right? Uh, passlib, it's just a password hashing library. And I've also included some of the common uh, machine learning libraries here as well that are commonly used. So sometimes people use TensorFlow or PyTorch or Facebook Profit to like do time series forecasts or LTSM and or whatever people do. I, I'm not a machine learning expert, but these, um, these packages are used commonly with uh, machine learning applications for finance. So Larry, you've talked about, you've listed all these Python packages. I still don't quite get it. What does this all do? Well, if you look in the directory structure here, what I'm trying to do is create uh, this environment with all these dependencies installed and also a bunch of common uh, code snippets and examples that you can use as a way to kind of kickstart uh, your financial uh, application or your trading project, right? And so there's a directory here called backtest, right? And what that would do is have a few examples of different backtesting uh, scripts and that you could use as an example. Like a lot of people just, so what I found in running this channel, you know, or reading material myself is that, you know, you'll see these big uh, textbooks like Python for finance, right? And there's just, it, it's just like a textbook, right? With a bunch of equations, some, some code and so forth. But uh, it's not always clear how to translate all this into a, a trading bot or whatever you're trying to build, right? And so what I want to do is provide these snippets of code that kind of connect all the pieces together and that way you don't have to start from scratch, right? A lot of this stuff is just boilerplate code, right? You just want a template to work upon and then you just want to plug in your strategy or, you know, you just want something to play with to kind of figure out how it all works and pieces together. And so I could take, uh, like we did that opening range breakout uh, back test, right? And so I could have a variety of back tests, right? And I haven't filled this all in yet, but this is the skeleton I'm thinking, right? Is that uh, I have some back tests in here that you can look at, run with back trader with all the dependencies installed, uh, see how the back test runs, you know, if you haven't been able to get these examples to work before. There's a directory uh, with different examples for the different brokers. All the broker API uh, packages would already be installed. You could run into these scripts uh, and test uh, this against the paper trading in your account, for instance, right? Um, just a config directory to store API keys, that sort of thing. Um, some data, some data scripts so that you can just load data from a data provider into the database. And so since we already have Postgres and Timescale DB here, what I would provide here is a way to just grab all the stock symbols or all the crypto symbols, cryptos, and load all the price data, for instance, into a, a DB. All right, let's check in on our Docker container to see where we're at. Hopefully we're done by now. So I'm going to go back to my command line and you will see, oh, looks good. Looks like it actually uh, finally finished. So I'm going to scroll up here to see, see uh, what I have here. 
And so you see how uh, over time all of these uh, Python packages uh, were installed, which would happen very quick normally on my normal internet connection speed. It just took a while. And so um, all these packages were installed, um, all the Python packages, and also, uh, so you see all the different versions here that we would freeze as part of this image. You can see right here that uh, timescale DB Postgres were uh, successfully started. So our database server is started. And also we have this web uh, server that's uh, started as well. And so you see everything is running. And so what I'm going to do here locally is go to a uh, local host 8000 and I actually have a web server running. So part of this package is when you build this whole thing, you get a web application out of the box. And what I'm going to do is include a variety of examples out of the box that all work, right? That provide examples that you can run and have all the dependencies installed. So all you do is Docker compose up and then you have this web application, you have a database, um, and everything basically you need to bootstrap and start your application. And so you have this little user interface here. I will include the demo video and links to different documentation that I've created for each of these examples. And obviously I'll link to myself to be self-promotional there. And then, so I can click on any of the examples here, right? So trading view real-time chart widget, and I click on that. And then already included is, you know, you could substitute your logo, pretend you're gonna start your own business or trading application, put your logo there, and bam, your trading view widget is here already. You got a web template, you got this uh, web-based route already. So that's that's really nice. And so um, all the things I've discussed in this channel before, I would like to create little examples here that are included in this package and you get this web application. And what's nice is not only you have this development environment that's running locally, you can also uh, deploy this to the cloud. And so I'll include the configuration so that you can just deploy whatever you develop here, right? And so you can see uh, this database server is running, this web application is uh, running, and you see all the logs running from the Docker container. And you can see um, in the web directory, right? You see I've provided some templates. So I have a layout here. Uh, that showed all of those examples. I include semantic UI um, out of the box. It got an index with all the examples and you can just like replace this with whatever you want. And then here's the trading view widget for instance, and that's configured a certain way and you just replace all this stuff and it just gives you a nice little scaffolding that you can kind of tear down and then build uh, whatever you want on top of it. And so if we look inside of like the main pie, right? And I haven't filled it all out yet, but there's like one route, it has a template. So this is a pre-configured uh, fast API. Uh, we have SQL Alchemy installed. So there'll be database examples. So I just wanted to include this big uh, kitchen sink uh, set of examples and packages that you can use just to get started with your application. That way, you know, you can just get going, right? You don't need to uh, look up all, all these different places and figure out how do I compile TA lib to run on Windows or install the wheel file or all the different things you need to do, right? So the idea is just to make uh, your life easier, but also make my life easier because I just want to teach and focus on strategies or more specific things rather than all these little uh, infrastructure pieces and I don't want to you know get emails all the time about different uh, oh I'm running Windows 7 32-bit and TA lib didn't install on my machine and, and different things like that so we can all start in a similar place we don't all have to configure a web server right this should be a solved uh, problem so the idea is just to get all of this out of the way have a bunch of examples that way anyone can get up and started uh, up and running just uh, really quickly so uh, yeah, so some web routes, web framework, uh, database. And one other cool thing about uh, Docker and the way Postgres has it configured, you can map uh, this init SQL file. And so out of the box, you know, we can include an init SQL file. And I'm looking for more feedback on this. So technically I can include like an entire database a schematic here for like uh, stock, uh, OHLC data, like some tables for storing different data. I haven't put a lot of thought into this, like how much of a database structure that people would want. A lot of times people just want to design their own database, right? But I could technically include a nice schematic and some different uh, data loading scripts that people can use and things like that. And the way this works, right? So I, this uh, Docker container is running now. And so I can run a command so I can use Docker PS here and you can see these containers are running. And so I can 
what what this does and jumping back to what docker is actually doing here right so i'll do a docker exec it and so i can execute a command on one of these containers and so um uh, this container is called uh, Trade Kit Web One. So if I want to jump on the uh, web web container, I can do this uh, and this run like a bash uh, terminal here. And right, this is what the container um, looks like. And then um, how do you get show show operating system Linux? I think it's uname or oh cat. Etsy release. Okay, cool. So I can do that, right? And you can see, like, I'm on OS X, but if I show the version, right, you see I'm on the container now. So that command lets me run commands on the container. And you can see this is like a Debian um, instance that's running. And you can see my application is here. I can run Python 3 here. And so even if I was on a brand new Windows machine, I can run Python 3. I have this little Linux distribution just running inside of this container. And I can import uh, TALib, for instance and it would just be there, right? So that's great, I can run those functions, I can import pandas, import numpy, right? And so this was all set up by me typing that one command, docker compose up, and now I have this cool uh, image with all this stuff pre-configured, and, like, and then I have this web framework up and running, right? And so I have this GUI already available if I were to go into um, the application, so into the uh, web, directory here, right, I got this main.py, I could create a brand new route and just do um, app.get uh, new route, or some route, right, or hello, right, and I could do async def uh, hello, request, request, right, and I, I would do a tutorial on this whole thing, but I could do hello world like that, Right, I save this, and you notice when I save it, um, this is automatically restarting as well, so it's automatically reloading in the container, right? You have all that functionality out of the box, and, and so uh, that's really cool. And in addition, you know, I mentioned this is running this Debian Linux with the web app, but it's also it automatically provides you with a database instance just out of the box. So when you type Docker Compose up, it also brought up a, a timescale DB, time series database running on top of PostgreSQL. And so I can do Docker exec uh, IT timescale, right? And get on there. So I'm on this database server that, you know, you notice I didn't have to do a bunch of steps, right? So this is already there and I can type, uh, I already have a user set up so I can uh, uh, log in as the trade kit user um, and I can uh, list right? I can list the tables or the relations, right? And so I can type this command, uh, slash dx, right? And you see I have uh, PostgreSQL. You can also see I have Timescale DB 2.0, a powerful uh, time series database, and that extension is automatically enabled on my Postgres instance. And you see when I typed uh, the list of relations, right? You can see I already have these tables in place. And so I can select star from stock, right? or whatever, right? And so I have uh, database tables already here already, and I could also provide scripts to load these tables uh, with data. So um, yeah, let me know what you think about that. I don't know, should I provide a database schema and some scripts to load uh, those database uh, tables with data? There's so, there's so many things you can do here, and there's so many different uh, components that could be provided. So yeah, I hope you see where I'm going with this. I'm just looking for um, some feedback on like what you'd want to see uh, provided by this channel going forward. Um, and I'm also trying to solve some problems for myself as far as just being able to teach from a common uh, base set of code and so that you can just focus on the strategy portion. And then maybe we can solve um, some of the common problems with just gathering data and setting up infrastructure, deployment, and those types of things. And this could provide just every single package that we use commonly and and we could use this as a base for everything we do uh, going forward so yeah i'm just looking for 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 feedback from from people on what this will look like and then maybe another week or two then i could release this more officially as like this open source project that people can use and maybe it becomes uh, maybe it becomes common right um and so the the issues with this i see right now is that um 
number one, you see how many different uh, libraries I am including here, and that might be overkill. Like, do you really need uh, four different backtesting libraries and and multiple web frameworks? Like, some people want to use Flask and Fast API. So a lot of times, you just want to make a Docker image that's the most lightweight as possible, and just include uh, just the packages you need. Um, just to keep the the package really the image really small, uh, but also I kind of liked having multiple examples here. Like not everyone wants to use the same brokerage. Some people want to use Ameritrade. Some people want to use Interactive Brokers. Some people want to use um, Alpaca, and so I like providing multiple brokerages and data providers and all that kind of thing. Uh, I don't know. Do you really need that many back testing libraries? I'm not sure. So yeah, let me know uh, what you think. Should I slim this down and just be very opinionated and say? This is the database you should use. This is the web framework you should use. This is the backtesting library that is the best. This is the best database. I've already kind of done that, saying Postgres is the best database with TimescaleDB. DB. Um, and you know, maybe you don't need all these. These machine learning packages are kind of big. I'm not sure whether to include those or not. So yeah, just trying to get feedback on what you would include. Is there stuff that I included here that that shouldn't be included, or are there some packages you know about that I have not included here? That uh, that are very important and should be because I, I maybe maybe there's some things I don't know about, um, yeah that sort of thing. What should be included in here? What would help make your life easier? Uh, getting started. Uh, what types of examples you need? Um, what types of things you'd like to see in a core set of code so that you could get up and running uh, very quickly? So yeah, let me know your thoughts and you know leave a comment. Uh, I'll post this maybe in some other places. I think I might, I'm going to post it on Reddit to see if I can get some feedback there. And yeah, I'll see what people, see what people's thoughts are. And if people like the idea, then I will uh, include all those, uh, all the feedback into a single package and uh, find out, uh, figure out how to configure this in a way that it can be uh, deployed and make a nice environment for developing these applications. That way, you know, we don't have to talk about installing all these dependencies. Uh, we'll just have them all set up and running and I can jump over to a Windows environment here, right? Which I'm in a Windows VM. Hopefully this comes through in the uh, video and I can go to trade kit here, right? And I can type the exact same command, right? Docker compose up. And it should pull the, see how it's uh, creating time scale and pulling the same images, right? So I type the exact same command. It's pulling time scale. It's pulling uh, the web application and starting it up. And so the exact same uh, image can run on Windows. And so if you're running on a Windows environment, you get the same setup. And that, you know, we can all, we can all hold hands and uh, develop uh, on the same uh, set of uh, code, the same type of environment here. And so now I got Timescale DB uh, running on Windows. I got the web application running on Windows. And then we don't have to have all these different discussions of different uh, operating systems. We're all on the same page. So uh, yeah, let me know what you think. Uh, let me know if it makes sense where I'm going with this. And then maybe this will become a project that we continuously maintain over the course of the year and becomes a building block for all of the applications we build on this channel. So uh, thanks a lot for watching. I hope you have a, continue to have a happy holidays and have a happy new year. I got some more videos on the way. Hopefully I, I uh, release a few videos on TimescaleDB time and some of the other libraries that I just talked about. So uh, thanks a lot for watching and stay tuned for the next video. Thanks.